All right, welcome back everyone to our second lecture, BC 110, our identity, who we are in Christ. So we, we just read Ephesians 1, 1 to 14, and uh, we looked at, we looked at, you know, the fact that there's so many times in just this one passage that the Apostle Paul is using those in Christ, in Him, in whom, and so on. So you're on page 15 in your notes. We've just listed them out. Um, what are the descriptors? of the believer's identity and life in Christ. So uh, I think there are probably about 16 descriptors that we find that are used in this passage. I just listed them there. So he says, we are blessed, we are chosen, we are holy, we are blameless, we are covered in love, uh, we've been predestined for this purpose, we've been adopted as his children, we are people for His praise. We are accepted in the Beloved. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. Uh, we are recipients of His overflowing grace. We are gathered as one in Christ. Uh, we've been given an inheritance. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And we are His purchased possession. So you can find all these descriptors. So this is who you are in Christ. This is true about you. And it's something God did for you. And me. Like we didn't pay for it. We didn't earn it. We didn't achieve it. God did it for us in Christ. Right? What we need to do as we as we go through the New Testament um, and, and uh, read these truths, uh, we need to say it out loud. We will we, again we'll explain that a little later. But a statement that that we must say often is, who I am in Christ is who I really am. So let's say it together. Who I am in Christ is who I really am. Okay? You just need to tell yourself that. Remind yourself. Who I am in Christ is who I really am. So somebody comes and says, hey, they may say bad things about you. Hey, you're like this. Hey, you're like that. You're no good. You're no... Yeah. Inside you, you don't have to tell them because they won't understand. It's okay. You don't have to tell them in their face. But inside you, you say what you want. But who I am in Christ is who I really am. You look to God. Father, thank you. Who I am in Christ is who I really am. It doesn't matter what these people say. It doesn't matter what comments they make, what remarks they make. Who I am in Christ is who I really am. Oh, of course, if somebody tells me something to help me become a better person, my attitude was not good, my behavior was not good, I will accept that. That's a different matter, right? That's them trying to help me be a better person. I'll accept that. But if somebody is demeaning me, devaluing me, telling me I'm no good, I'm useless, I cannot achieve it. No, 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 no. I will not accept it. Because who I am in Christ is who I really am. Right? That should be settled in your heart. Because uh, people will make all kinds of comments. They'll say all kinds of things. Sometimes um, they may say it uh, I mean, like as a joke. Uh, they may say it for fun. They may say things that hurt you. Okay? But don't let it affect you. What they say is their problem. Because I know who I am in Christ. You know who you are in Christ. You stay with that. Don't let those words affect you. Right? And, uh, you know, you take those scriptures, you personalize it, make it yours. Right? Many times we may read the Bible and we just look at it as text and leave it there. No, no, no. What you read in the Bible, make it personal, make it yours. This is me. This is what God is saying about me. 
So you make these, or, or whatever we saw in Ephesians 1, 1 to 14, you make it yours. And so uh, at the bottom of page 15, uh, we've just uh, personalized it just to give an example of how you can say it. In Christ, I am blessed with every blessing from God. I am chosen. I am holy and set apart unto God. I am blameless without fault and righteousness. I am covered in love, totally loved by the Father. I am predestined according to his purposes. I am adopted as his child into his family. I am a people for his praise, displaying his glory, revealing his grace. I am accepted in the beloved. I'm redeemed by his blood. I'm forgiven in Jesus. I'm a recipient of his abounding, overflowing grace. I'm part of those gathered together as one in Christ Jesus. I've been given a rich spiritual inheritance in Jesus. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. and God's mark of ownership on my life. I'm, I'm his purchased possession. I belong to him. I am his property. So say these things. You say, why should I say these things? Many reasons. First, when you say it, first of all, it's going to build faith in your heart. Because faith comes by hearing the word of? So you say it. You are hearing the word. You're hearing the word. So you say it. You're hearing the word. So faith comes by hearing the word. You are helping. You're building your own faith in God. Second, as you say it, it renews your mind. Your mind needs to change. Remember, we said the slum boy... Uh, even if he comes to the, you know, the rich family, but if he's still thinking like a slum boy, it's no point. So you need to change your thinking. And one way to renew your thinking, to change your thinking, is for you to hear the word over and over and over again until your thinking gets changed to the word of God. You start thinking like the word. God said, God said, this is who I am. So in every situation, it will just come automatic because you have put that word in your mind. You renewed your mind for that word. So this comes, this is, what, this is who I am. I'm forgiven and so on. Right? What I just want to emphasize here in Ephesians 1.4, it says, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. I just want to emphasize that a little bit. That means this was God's plan, even before he started creation. Before he's created anything, God planned it. That he's going to have a people who would be part of him. So that's the big difference between people and angels. Angels are created beings. We are also created beings. What's the difference? He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. And that's not true about angels. So we are different. We are in Him. We are, we are like the branch that's connected to the vine. We are part of Him. His life in his, is in us. And this, is, this was God's plan before the foundation of the world. Even before he started creation, he had a plan. And that plan was he would create a people who would be part of him, who would be in us. That's you and me. So this truth that we are unveiling now as we are going into the scriptures and looking at it, this truth was in the mind of God even before he created anything. It was part of his plan that, it, that we would be in him. We were chosen in him even before the foundation of the... So that he would have a people who would be holy and without blame, blameless, holy people, covered by his love. That was his plan. They're angels. They do what God wants them to do and they worship and all of that. But the people, they are part of Him. In Him. And they're holy and without blame, covered in His love. 
So our life comes from Him. We are in Him. We are connected to Him. To no angel, He said, sit here with me at my right hand. But to you and me, He said, I've made you sit together with Jesus at my right hand. Angels are watching. Hey. But for you and me, He's made us sit at His own right hand in Christ. Amen? So this, this, this truth is something that God was had in His mind. And then, after Christ's resurrection, the Holy Spirit revealed that truth to the church. So you can imagine, the Old Testament saints didn't know these things. They didn't have this revelation. Because Jesus said, after He was risen up, then you will know. So it's the church that has the privilege of this revelation. Very special. We have this. The Old Testament saints didn't know these things. Lesson number four. Another thing we want to highlight from this passage in Ephesians 1 is that men, almost all of these are in the past tense. It's in the past tense. So as you read it, look at what it says. You know, verse 3, as an example, look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. That means He's already done it. It's in the past tense. God is not saying, I'm going to bless you somewhere in the future. Then we'll all be sitting and waiting. Sometime in the future, it'll happen. Now, that's not what he's saying. He, Paul is writing. He says, praise God, our Father. Praise God, our Father. Father of our Lord Jesus. Praise God. Why? He has blessed us. He has blessed us. It's done. So I'm not waiting for God to do it. Paul is telling us, God has already done it. But where? In the spiritual realms. In He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That means in their spiritual realms. He's already blessed us in Christ. Notice the other verses. They're all in past tense. He chose us. He's not going to choose us. He chose us. Verse 4. Verse 5. Having predestined us. That means it's already done. Verse 7. In Him we have redemption. It's something you already have. It's done. It's yours. Um, Verse 11, we have obtained an inheritance. It means it's already there. Yeah, He's given it to you. Verse 13, you were sealed. It's done. Right. Now verse 14 is telling us that there is something else more to come. It says, he is the guarantee or it is like the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption, the purchase, possession, the praise of His glory. That means there is some of this that is going to be given to us in the future. When the, the when redemption is complete, and we'll explain that a, 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 a little bit later. But all of these things, up until verse 14, is all, it's all done. Yes, there is something that's going to be in the future. For instance, our glorified bodies. That is going to come in the future after the resurrection. And we will all receive glorified bodies. Our bodies will be like His. But right now, our bodies are mortal. This body will one day die. So there is part of our inheritance which is kept for the future. One day we will all sit and reign with Jesus. Literally, during His millennial reign, thousand year reigns, we'll, uh, years on the earth, will reign with Jesus. One day we will enter into new heavens and the new earth. That is out in the future. So those are things that are reserved for us in the future. That's our future inheritance. 
but there is also a lot of things that have already been given to us now. That's what we want to focus on. Right? We want to focus on, oh, God has already done all this for me. It's here. It's for me right now. He has blessed me with all this in the heavenly places. I must walk in it. I must uh, use this. So you can list, you know, we can list out from the same passage the past tense uh, that we just went through, right? So God has already given this to us, and we understand there are some things in the future. You're with me so far? Any questions? Let me just see online students if anybody has any questions. Any questions from online students? All good? Everybody's here. Venkat Tayson, you have a question? You have your hand raised? Maybe you can put it down. You don't have a question. All right, let's go. Hello. You have a question? There's not, no more any questions. Okay. All right. Fine, let's continue. Go back to the notes. So, not lesson number five. What we must understand is that what everything God has done for us, it is in heavenly places. So this is a spiritual reality. Right? It's in the heavenly realms or spiritual realms. Um, so what God has done for us, what God has given to us, it is in the spiritual realm, in our life in Christ. So that means we have to learn to live out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. So part of what we are going to learn is how do I make this spiritual, what I have in the spiritual realm, come to bear upon what I'm facing in the natural realm? For example, example. Suppose in the natural realm, some problem is happening. All right. There's a challenge, there's a situation, something. Okay. I'm not, we, should, we, are not, we shouldn't deny it. Don't say, oh, there's no problem. No, there is a problem. There is a situation. But in the spiritual realm, I have, God has already given me what I need to address the problem. Example, maybe I need wisdom to solve the problem. And the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 1.30, Christ has been made to us wisdom from God. Ah, wisdom is already there. In the natural, I need wisdom. I'm facing a situation, a challenge, something is going, not going right. I need to know how to solve it. But in the spiritual, Christ has been made unto me wisdom. I am in Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay, uh, sometimes I quote these verses and you're all looking at me like, oh, what is he saying? Okay, turn in your Bibles, 1 Corinthians 1.30. So I'm just giving an example now. It's not in the notes. It's just going. So I want to show you these scriptures. 1 Corinthians, please. 1 Corinthians 1.30. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. First Corinthians 1 30. It says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus. You underline that again. It says, You are in Christ Jesus. Okay, I'm in Christ. What about that? Who became for us wisdom from Christ. God. Jesus has been made wisdom from God to us. Jesus is my wisdom. So in Christ, Jesus is your wisdom. 
And who is Jesus? He's the wisdom of God. So in Christ, the wisdom of God is available to me. Also, please go with me to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And look at verse 3, please. Colossians 2 and verse 3. So I want to encourage you. Try to memorize as many of these scriptures on who we are in Christ. Okay? Try to memorize. Now, we have a church app. You can download it. Put it on your phone. It's available both in the Android and uh, Apple, I mean, in the Google and Apple Play stores, a church app. Uh, you search for all people's church, Bangalore. You download the app, and in the app, all these verses are given. Who we are in Christ. Makes it easy. Okay? And you can try to memorize it. Put it in your heart. Put it in your mind. Okay? So then you can just, you know, meditate in it or quote it. I mean, you just, just comes out, right? Anyway, Colossians 2 verse 3. In whom? Again, in whom? It's in Christ. What about that? In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He's saying in Jesus, all wisdom and knowledge is in him. And where are you? You are in him. So that means you do have access to the treasures of wisdom and Knowledge. Right? And if you look at verse 10, we're going to study these things. I'm just giving you an example. If you look at verse 10, uh, sorry, verse 9 and 10, it says, For in him, again, in him, underline that, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Again, you are complete in him. So, Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10. So in Jesus, there's the fullness of God. And because you are in Him, you become complete. That means you don't lack anything. Because all the fullness of God is there in Christ. So coming back to this example. Suppose I'm facing a problem. And I need wisdom. God, how do I solve this? It's very difficult, this child. How do I solve I need wisdom. What do I do? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you. I have access to that wisdom. I just need little wisdom to solve this problem. And so, God, I thank you that you give me the wisdom to solve this. Right? And then I do my work. That means I go after the problem, I investigate, try to understand. But in the process, in the process, God's wisdom flows through. And I'm able to solve the problem. Sometimes you're facing a difficulty. And maybe you don't need wisdom. You need to exercise authority. So Lord, I thank you. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I take authority over what the devil is doing in the situation. I said, devil, you stop it. Take your hands up. And you enforce your authority, your God-given authority over that situation. So what is it? What am I saying? God has given these things to us in the heavenly places, in the spiritual realm. But we have to take what is ours in the spiritual realm and make it bear on our situation here on earth. Whatever you need. Sometimes you need wisdom. Sometimes you need to exercise authority. Sometimes you need to exercise love. So some people are being rude to you, mean to you. So God, if I had the chance, I will give them a nice punch. But I don't want to do that. Lord, I want to love them in spite of what they're doing. Oh, Lord, thank you. The Bible says, the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 5. Turn there, please. Romans 5, 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. What does it say? Romans 5, 5. Now hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit 
who was given to us. God's love has been poured into your heart. So in the natural, by my own strength, I cannot love these people because they are being so rude to me. But God's love is poured into my heart. So Lord, now I can love them. So God, I know they're saying all this, they're being, but God, I release your love to flow to them. So what am I doing? I'm drawing from what is there in the heavenly realms. I'm drawing from what is there in the spiritual, and I'm bringing it to bear in the natural. Are you understanding? Yes or no? Yeah, you understand, right? So this is how we're supposed to live. From the heavenly realms, from the spiritual realm, from the spiritual into the natural. Of course, we do our natural work. That means you, you know, in every situation, there are natural things you do, you address the problem. But along with it, there is the flow of the spiritual, what God has given to us in Christ. You bring it to bear on that situation. Okay. So what God has done for us, it's in heavenly places in Christ. It's in the spiritual realm, but we must learn to live out of the spiritual into the natural. Bring it to bear into the natural. Now, this mystery has been revealed to us. And I mentioned this earlier. The Old Testament saints, they didn't know all this. They didn't have the privilege of this mystery. But in the New Testament, it is unveiled. It's opened up for us. Yeah. So Paul Mintz writes about that there in Ephesians 1. He says, he has made known to us the mystery of his will. This is something he willed even before the foundation of the world. This is something that was part of God's will. And the mystery of his will he's made known to us according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. So God purposed this of his own choosing. He purposed to do this, and he's made known this mystery to us. And part of this mystery is, verse 10, that in, in the right time, in the fullness of times, he's gathering everyone in Christ. Jews, Gentiles, every person, every believer, he's gathering all of us in Christ. We're all in Christ. So to gather, to bring us all in Christ, this was God's plan. It was something he purposed in himself. And now he is, is, is revealing that mystery to us. He said, this was my plan to bring you all into Christ. It was my plan. And, and God has revealed that to us in Christ. And in Ephesians 3, Paul, he says, you know, and... And this is what I am preaching. He okay. says, uh, uh, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, 1 to 7. I, Paul, you all with me now on page 18? Yeah. Page 18 in your notes. Okay. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, for indeed you heard of the dispensation, the grace of God, which was given to me for you, that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. It was 3. So God revealed this mystery to the Apostle Paul. And Paul wrote it down for us. He revealed to me the mystery. Verse 4, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So God revealed this to Paul. He has written. Notice verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. So he's telling, look, in other ages, they didn't know these things. Verse 5, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. And now this revelation has been given to the body, to the church. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ. Underline that. In Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. That even the Gentiles, They'll all come together in Christ. So this is the mystery. Paul says other, other previous generations, they didn't know it. But today, but 
at that time through the apostles, the prophets, God was revealing this mystery to the church that we would all come together in Christ. Uh, and, and Paul is a minister, he's teaching and preaching that. Lastly, uh, lesson number seven. Um, in that same passage in Ephesians 1, let's go back there, please, to Ephesians 1. You can also look it up in your, in your notes on page 19. Ephesians 1. This is a prayer that you and I can pray. And uh, Paul is praying for the Ephesians. And he's asking that God will help them understand the revelation by the help of the Holy Spirit. That's the prayer. And this is a prayer that you and I, we can pray for ourselves and we can also pray for one another, pray for the church. Let's read that. He says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, Verse 16, Ephesians 1. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. So he says, I'm praying for you. What's he praying for them? Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he says, I pray that God will give you the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and revelation to know him. So that's the first thing, to know Him. So we must pray, God, give, I want wisdom and revelation to know you, to know you. Then, what else does He pray? Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling. So that's the second thing to know. First, know Him. So underline that. To know Him. He prays for four things. Four things the believers must receive revelation about. Four things. First, they must know Him. Know God. Second, verse 18. To know the hope of your calling or the purpose of your calling. So for many believers, you know, you ask them, they're, they're probably 50 years, 60 years, what is your calling? I don't know. I'm still searching. Ah, that's how Paul prayed. I want you to know the purpose of your calling. Know what God has called you to do. So I pray. Oh God, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God, that I will know the purpose of your calling. What have you called me to? Hey, and the sooner you know it, the better, because then you can live according to that calling. Others will be searching here, searching there, living life by the time time goes by. You don't know, I don't know what my calling is, still searching. Ah. Ask God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that you will know the purpose of your calling. You all with me so far? Yes or no? You don't seem excited, right? <laughs> so that's the second thing. To know the purpose of your calling. Thirdly. Verse 18, to know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That's the third thing. That means we must know, we as believers, we must know the glorious inheritance that God has given to us as his saints. The inheritance God has given to us. We know that. And this is, that, this is what we are going to do in this course. To understand the inheritance God has given to us. What is an inheritance? It is what, you know, like a father gives to his children. That's an inheritance. So Paul is saying, I want you to know the glorious inheritance that God has given to you. Because you are, you are a saint. You, you, you are a part of whom he has called. To know that. Many believers don't know their inheritance. They don't know the glorious inheritance that God has given. So you, you must pray, God, I want to know this inheritance. Then only then you can live out of it. They know the glorious inheritance. And then the fourth thing, verse 19. And to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. That means I want you to know how much power 
God has made available to us who believe. So four things he prays. I want you to know him. I want you to know the purpose of his calling. I want you to know the inheritance he's given you. And I want you to know the power he's made available to us as believers. Then he tells us about the power. He's saying the power that God has made available to us, it's the same power that God used to raise Jesus up from the dead and lift him and put him at his own right hand. Meaning, it, the power that God has made available to us, it's the power that has conquered all of death and hell. That's the power God's made available to you and me. But we need a revelation of it. We need to understand it. So you pray for yourself. God, open the eyes of my understanding. Open my eyes. Give me wisdom and revelation so I may know you. I may know the hope of your calling, the purpose of your calling. That I may know the inheritance you've given to me. And I may know the power you've made available to me. Pray that for yourself. Every day. Often as often. God, open my eyes. I want to know. If our eyes are hidden, if we don't know this, we can't live out of it. But when you know this, then we can live out of that truth. Are you with me? Yeah? So we must ask the Lord, Lord, give me revelation of this, these things. right? And this revelation comes into our human spirit. So in our second year, we learn a course about the human spirit, uh, what it is and how do you, you know, develop it, build it. But here's just a little summary. Uh, the human spirit has at least seven functions. And, uh, you know, the conscience, knowing. Knowing is part of the human spirit. So... To know spiritual things, you don't know spiritual things. You won't get to know spiritual things by your mind. You get to know spiritual things in your spirit. So that means you can believe things which your mind cannot understand. Your mind will not understand it, but you still believe it. How is that possible? Because your spirit can know even when your mind cannot understand. And that's a function of the spirit, the human spirit. And it's in your spirit you need to know these truths. You know it in your spirit. And then you can live out of it. Live out of that spirit. Right? So God gives us that illumination in our spirit. Okay? And uh, we have to grow in the knowledge of these things. Okay, uh, let me pause here. Are, are you all with me so far? Okay. So this mystery, Colossians 1, 26, 27, this mystery, which was hidden from ages, from generations, has now been revealed to his saints. So what a privilege. Right? Page 20, Colossians 1, 26 and 27. It was hidden. Can you imagine? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David. All of them didn't know this. It was hidden. But now it's revealed to the saints, to you and me. What a privilege. You must not waste it. Okay? And God wants us to know the riches of this, about our life in Christ, in Christ in us, which is the hope of glory. And yeah, I think this must be the last point. Yeah. Point lesson number eight. We need to grow in the knowledge of these things. That means our spirit must increase in the knowledge. Right? So even though we'll go through this course, 10 years from now, you have to go back and meditate all these verses. Don't say, I did it first year, I forgot. No. These are truths we have to live by and go back to it again and again. And as you keep going back to these truths, you'll actually keep understanding more and more. Keep understanding more and more. Right? So don't think, okay, I learned it once, is enough. No. Keep going back to it because we have to keep growing in this knowledge. And Colossians 3, verse 10, it says, put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge. So this new man, that is this new person you've become in your spirit. We'll talk about that in, in, in upcoming lessons. That it has to be constantly renewed in knowledge. Keep on growing. Keep on renewing in knowledge. 
in the in the image of God. Right. So this this journey is is an ongoing journey. We are continuously being renewed in knowledge of our Lord and Savior and, and what He's done for us in Christ. Okay. So let's stop here for today. Um, for as homework. I would like to request you to please review this till page 20, 21. Just go through it and try to start memorizing scripture on who you are in Christ. At least Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. At least you start from there, right? So verse 3, 4, and 5. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You start memorizing. Keep going. Put it into your spirit. Okay? So review these, um, this first part, these 21 pages. Just go through it again. And start memorizing these scriptures on who you are in Christ. And like I said, uh, all of these scriptures are in the church app, so you can put it on your phone. So anytime you can just open it and start looking at these verses, uh, wherever you are, and uh, begin to speak it over yourself, over your own mind, uh, and, and, and renew your mind with this. All right. Um, any questions from our online students? You all with me so far? Any questions? Anybody? Okay, you all good? Thank you. John, I see you. Thank you. All right, we're going to pray, and then we will close. We'll go for a break, and you can get ready for your next class. Okay, let's take a moment to pray, please. Father, we thank you so much that we could begin this journey of discovering who we are in Christ. And Father, I pray for each one, Lord, in this class, online, e-learning, that you will give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That the Holy Spirit, Lord, will fill our hearts and minds with wisdom and revelation so that we will understand the mystery that's been revealed to the church. That we will understand these things. That these things will be so in our hearts and renew our minds that will begin to live out of these truths in everyday life. Help us to walk in it. Help us to live by it. Let this become real in our lives. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us as we make this journey in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Have a good break. And 10 minutes, uh, or sorry, 12 o'clock, uh, your next class will start. Thank you.